Well, hello, everybody. This is uh, now starting. Um, I'd like to get everybody on board with the photograph. I hope everybody has that. And if anybody has any issues, please text um, so that we can quickly, you know, send you an image on chat. Uh, maybe that's something we should do anyways. Um, let's talk about paints today. So as you can see, we have this lovely sunset. Um, I took this photograph, um, stopped somewhere on a tiny road uh, going into a reservation in Albuquerque. And I just love the uh, picture so much. I wanted to paint it. Um, these are the paints I'm using mostly today. This is a Winsor Newton Winsor Yellow. This is Quar Temp uh, Transparent Pirole Orange, which is a lovely, lovely transparent orange. This is Pirole Scarlet by Daniel Smith. And this is a Mineral Violet by Holbein Paints. Um, I, of course, will dip into my palette for a few other things. Uh, but these are the ones that I will be using quite a bit of, and um, they're just lovely for this particular image. Um, so let me say, hi, I'm Hema. I teach watercolor, and I paint, and I have a studio practice. Um, I teach classes at the Arts Council. Um, they're up on the website if you're ever interested in looking them up. Uh, my co-hosts today are Claudia and Rima. Um, they're fabulous artists. You guys won't believe the work they do. Um, <laughs> they have been with me for a few semesters and I'm just blown away by the consistency and the work they put in. And more importantly, their enjoyment of watercolor, which is what it all comes down to. Um, so I'm very grateful for them joining in and um, helping me so I don't feel so alone here in this webinar mode. <laughs> um, all right, so let's get started, guys. Uh, one of the first things I'd like everybody to feel confident about is that we should have um, our water containers. I just use these kinds of um, yogurt containers, if people can kind of see that. Just regular yogurt containers or um, deli or disposable containers, that's fine. Uh, but a jam jar or something is lovely. Um, I do have a spray bottle and I will be using possibly this round brush. Um, this is not really a step-by-step -step watercolor class. So if you find yourself feeling a bit like, oh my God, Hema's just rushing headlong and I can't catch up, um, please uh, bear with us. Uh, we're reaching out to an audience that's quite diverse and uh, in terms of experience, watercolor experience, because I've had beginners join in and quite some experienced artists as well. So it's fun to be able to meet the middle ground, but it's tough. So if you have questions, please do type it into the text uh, chat box. Um, Rima and Claudia will alert me or they might be able to answer the questions. Um, so we will help you find your way. Uh, but we Emma. will also, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, someone asked for a, a, a photo in their, in the text box. Um, is there a way, it, was it emailed to everybody? Because I, I can't yes. seem to add it to the text box. I can't seem to okay. add a, a picture. Yes, no, no worries. I'm going to quickly put one in because I have it right here on my desktop. Um, okay. And then um, if anybody else needs it, they may have to travel up into the text. Um, could someone please confirm that they got this file and they can see it? It's called sunset.jpg or JPEG, you know? Okay. Uh, um, no, you sent this, you just sent it to host and panelists. So you got to send it to everyone. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Everyone. There we go. Trying not to stress out that I'm doing the wrong things. Ask. Uh, wait. There we go. Hey, okay. can I say hi? Yay. Who wants to say hi? Somebody wants to say hi. Oh, that's my son. Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello. <laughs> Hello, hello. <laughs> Join us. Paint with yeah. us. He's got to eat his dinner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, brushes. So, guys, again, uh, if you feel like I'm jumping in, running along headlong, uh, please uh, bear with us. We're doing the best we can. But also ask questions. Uh, come and join a class, maybe. Uh, uh, we have other watercolorists teaching as well at the Arts Council. Lots of options. Um, here's one of them, a Princeton uh, Round 16. It's a brush I will be using tonight. I'm going to be testing these um, new brushes I got. They're Artegria 
Intuition Quill brushes, the kind of pretty little brushes here. I usually love my Princeton brushes. I have a quill here. And I told everybody that I would be using a flat in the email. This is the flat I love. It's a Mottler brush. That's the kind of brush this is. And it's a one and a half inch Princeton Aqua Elite. So these are the brushes I'll be using tonight. Um, I have a tester sheet here. So I always do this. I tell my students to do this. Um, just the same paper as the paper you're working on, preferably. And what you do is you use this paper to test your colors on. Excuse me a second. Okay, so you use this to test your colors. And that way, for example, I will do one right now. Let's take some of this lovely pearl orange that I have. And I'm gonna test all the colors that I want. So for example, I know I want this color for this painting. And what size paper, somebody asks. Okay, um, so this one here is about, what, 15 inches by 11. Um, I probably, even though I will go edge to edge on this paper and enjoy like, you know, having a fun time with this painting, eventually you can crop it off. Now you could do a painting this small, which is, let's say this tester sheet of mine is 11 by seven and a half. Um, that's fine too. Um, some of my students actually do pretty small paintings because they'd like to just get a sense of what they're doing before they do a big one. No problem. Whichever size, right? Um, all right, let's see what else. Oh yeah, colors. Let's get our palette all sorted. Yes, yeah? so I'm gonna show you some of the colors I'm using tonight. I have a, a lovely um, Pirole Scarlet over here. And the other color that I love is my Mindel Violet, which I will show you. These are pretty bold colors. Um, please just join us in for like fun exploration. This is not a serious, uh, class by any means. It's to have fun with the colors. So I hope you can see that. And if you decide you want a, a different color in your um, painting, by all means, go ahead. Maybe you don't have the colors I'm using. That's fine too. Um, the closest I would say is a cadmium red. If most paint boxes have that, um, this would be a violet or a purple of some kind. That would be almost like any orange, like a cadmium orange will work fine. And this could be a lemon yellow, which is kind of nice to have that pop, but a cadmium yellow will work just as fine. Yeah. So these are the colors uh, mostly. Now, besides this, I also have some darks. And for that, I have some deep like viridian green type of thing. And I have a few other like leftover bits and bobs of color. Like I call them my palette muck. Palette muck is so awesome. It's the kind of stuff that you have left at the corners of your palette or when you don't clean your palette and you have a bunch of colors just mixed up there and dried up usually. As long as you have some mm -hmm. clean area on your palette to paint on or uh, to mix on, um, the palette mark gives you, you know, like let's say you have this green, okay? And now I want to go and make my orange a little darker. I took some of the palette mucky green that I had and I made this color, which is a lovely sort of neutral... I, I'm muting my orange and making it almost a brown. Yeah. Um, guys, is the focus still sharp? It is, right? Okay, it is. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to keep my tester sheet just over here where I can see it, keep track of all my paints, and I'm going to dive in. Um, if you have questions at the stage, please ask. I'm not going to use a pencil um, uh, for much. It's just going to be to point out that this photograph is sort of evenly divided half and half. Um, it's sometimes a good thing, sometimes not such a good thing. Um, I'm gonna put the sun just a little above because I wanna enjoy some of the, the crazy colors that are in the, the landscape itself with the mountains in the distance, the city, and then all of this lovely green foliage. So I'm gonna put the, the sun just slightly off center. Uh, my sun's gonna be somewhere over here. Um, and then let's see what else. Oh, and the horizon. Let's just draw a simple horizon. Now you can do this differently. There's no rules. It's we're just uh, having fun here. Um, I want to draw that building. There's, there's this little building that juts out. So I'm just gonna loosely put that in so that I kind of know what kind of space I'm dealing with. And then I have this lovely line of trees and shrubbery and whatnot, and there's that. Yeah. 
Um, there's also a bit of a road, and I, I could keep the road. I'm not so sure about that. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll just put a line in there, and we'll see what happens. Um, I also want the, the land to go a little uh, at a rise here and have some other shrubbery and things happening down there. Let's see. There's all these beautiful flat formations in the distance, uh, little flat lands, flat tabletop. Um, oh, my gosh. Rima, Claudia, you want to help me with that geographical formation? <laughs> What's it called? One of the kids will know. Uh, right. uh, you know those uh, the land formations where they're like these um, tabletop plateau like land you mean like a uh, mesa is that what it is it's m-a-s-o-n m-e-s-a m-e-s-a mesa that's what it is yes you're right so those um, and out here in Albuquerque there are these beautiful um, uh, extinct volcano little tiny volcanoes and they it looked quite interesting to me. All right, let's see. Um, any questions before we really get into this? All right, first step, I'm going to say what I'm going to do before I do it so people can have a second to absorb that. Um, we're going to use the mottler, nice and wet. I'm going to put clean water uh, across the entire age. Now, if that sounds scary and crazy, it's all right. You don't have to do it. But one of the reasons I'm doing that is so that I can enjoy letting colors bleed in with each other. And uh, this is something that can be uh, very, uh, you know, it can be nerve wracking, but at the same time, the most fun you ever have in watercolor. So I just want to say that I will, give me one second. I'm trying to pull up an image here so that, I'm wondering if I could share that with you. Maybe I can't. Hmm. Okay. Anyways, um, I'm going to show you how to keep the sun. Uh, the core of the sun is going to be white. And that's important um, because I don't want to have uh, the sun be completely yellow right at first. I can always make it yellow later. Uh, but initially, I really want it to be a nice bright yellow. Uh, bright uh, white, sorry. So let's see. Is is everything visible? Is Is everything good? Claudia, Rima, we're good to go. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if you need people to see the drawing you made, but um, because we were watching it, but it's it's very light. It's not really that visible. OK, I'm going to draw this a little darker so people can see it and I can always cover this. So is this line better? Is that yeah, a little... that's more yeah. visible. OK, and then I'm going to draw this because anyways, this is going to be dark. So it's OK if I have some of my pencil lines, you know um visible so this is my tree line here my little tree line shrubbery what have you um maybe it's multiple layers so this is sort of the foreground and in the foreground we have all these big beautiful shapes i just want to capture that um you might notice some lovely um <laughs> little pops of white and those are like bright lights from either i don't know buildings houses something so I do want to bring that in and we will use a little bit of white gouache or white watercolor paint. We will not try to leave that white as, you know, sometimes you do in watercolor. Um, I hope this pencil line is a bit more visible now yes, to everybody. it is. Yeah, yeah. And you can see the horizon. You want the horizon to be fairly flat. You don't want the horizon to go at an angle because it is fairly flat out there. <laughs> All right. Now that we have this set, I'm going to go in with some water and just go right over all of it. Now, those of you who don't want to do this, you do not have to. You can do it directly as a regular painting. You just get in there and, yeah. But I'm going to go in like so and just go all the way down. Now, why am I going into all of it? Well, it if some of the yellow bleeds downward, it's fine. I just don't want to have an edge without the yellow in it or the, the sky color rather, not yellow really, because it's going to be a mix of colors. And the bottom doesn't matter too much. Now, where is that sun going to be? So for me, I want the sun just a little off center, right about there. And I know you can't quite see it, but that area is now fairly dry. And I'm just going to pat it down and keep it dry. This is important because I don't want the color to bleed in. Yeah. All right. Next, I am um, going to turn. I know this is kind of crazy, but 
Bear with me. We're going to turn the painting upside down. Uh, you guys with me, Rima? You good? Oh, I don't know if I can hear Rima. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, sorry. Oh, no worries. No worries. Hi. Okay, so I got some um, lovely Windsor yellow all ready to go. And I would like to paint this upside down because I really want that color to bleed in without touching this um, sun area. But I, if you can see with me, guys, the sky goes all the way down. The sky color uh, with the um, sort of blue cast on top. Okay, let's do this the other way mm -hmm. first so people can understand. Blue cast on top, bleeding into a sort of pale orange, bleeding into a deep orange, bleeding into a bit of a red by the, uh, or a, even a pale pink even by the horizon, going into a blue purple and a pink purple and this beautiful, mm -hmm. crazy, um, what's the glow called when you have this effect in photography? Yeah, Rima, Claudia. Uh, but that lovely umbra kind of effect, right? This huge effect. Um, I'm going to try and bring some of that in, but we'll do all of that while it's wet. So let's have some fun. I'm going to turn it upside down only because I want to get some of that blue in. And which blue am I going to use? That's the question. So I have a tiny touch of um, teal or like turquoise. And I'm just going to bring that in. It feels like the right color. Now, remember, if your paper is wet, if you're painting it the way I am, it's going to be fairly you know, wet. It, it's it's going to need a punch of color because that color is going to dry a whole shade lighter because that's what watercolor does. Yeah. Um, let me get just a bit more of that teal going. And here you go. All right. Now, as I do this, I definitely want more yellow leaking in and a lot more yellow than any orange. So it's somewhere in the middle. It's like a pale orange, maybe. So I'm going to do that, gonna get some water. And I'm just going to leak this in. And the nice thing is when the paper is wet like this, it does its own magic. It'll start like bleeding things with each other. It will do its own thing. You don't have to worry much about it. And now time to get into my favorite color, Pirol Orange, mixed with a little bit of that yellow. And uh, let's see if we can make this nicer. So I'm going to go in here and here because that's the strongest coloring. And now because everything is nice and wet and because we wet the paper, we have opportunity to just keep going back and bleeding stuff in and have some fun with this. All right, guys, there we go. Now the sun is getting a little, you know, undefined, but that's okay. Um, and this is getting beautiful and muddy, not muddy, sorry, <laughs> spreading beautifully. Um, if you see that white there, you can also notice that there's a spot there where I can put leak in, if you can see that. I'm going to just take some lovely honey consistency, which means very dense, very thick um, yellow paint, like just the horizon, uh, just the um, uh, winter yellow, I'm so sorry. And I hope you can see how lovely, I hope it's visible. Um, I can just do a little bit of a blur here and sort of pick up some of that paint and sort of soften the white. So the white stands out. And if I lose some of the white, I just go back in and bring that back. Um, and now I'm gonna go in with some really deep yellow. And get some more of that yellow there. There we go. Just a little nice go around the sun. Okay. I do want that orange to get punched up a bit. So I'm going to go back in, pick up some of that lovely Pirol orange that I have. Okay. And go in again. And things are still nice and wet. So they are, they're just, you know, blending really well okay so while this is all lovely and pretty i also want to start now putting in my colors underneath and for that i'm going to use a little bit of the pearl scarlet mixed with some of that lovely purple 
which was the violet, the mineral violet. That's the one I was using. Now, the thing is to test these colors before I go crazy here. So you see that lovely color there? That's um, a sort of, um, let's say, orange violet. That's kind of the color I'm, I see there. I'm going to bring in a little bit of that and the pyrrole orange and see if I can just bleed some of that in. And definitely that lovely deeper color is what we need over there. So I'm just going to go in. As you can see, I'm really playing with these colors, just leaking it in. And I'm not scared of the color getting stronger because I am playful. And I'm just going to put that in there. There we go. Now, while I'm doing all of this, um, if I feel like the color is beginning to run upwards, I can do this. Okay, this helps. And you can actually put it on a little board like I have here. Um, you could just let that, you know, sort of go at an angle slightly for a second if it feels too much. The other thing to do in this case is, in my case, I want to put a little touch of purple, uh, which is the middle violet, and a bit of the red. And I get this. In fact, I'm going to use a little bit of the crimson also. I have a bit of crimson up here. Um, crimson is just a nice cold red. It's beautiful. And if you just leak in some of that pink there, because the crimson is giving me that nice pink, it also creates a slight different color over there at the edge. Um, I actually kind of like the way it's looking. I don't mind that bleed. But if I wanted to clean it up just a tad, um, I would go in and I would just do this. I would lift it up just a tad. There we go. Now, I know watercolor seems like it may be a very unforgiving medium because you have to go in always you know, light to dark, you got to think about what you're doing. For those of you who can't quite follow along with all of the stuff I'm saying, please do come test out a class. Um, I will try and do a more basic one for the next, uh, or one of them. One of them is going to be a bit more beginner oriented, and I hope that will help. Um, I also feel like putting in, leaking in some color here, so I'm just going to do that. And Hema, um, there will be a there will be a um, a recording of this, correct? Ooh, great point. Yes, there's a recording. This is getting recorded right now as we speak, and it's just perfect because we're going to need that. Everybody can enjoy that later on. It'll come on the YouTube channel. That's um the Arts Council YouTube channel. I have a tiny errant strand of hair in here, so I'm going to have to pick him up. Oh, picking up too much. Okay, <laughs> that happens sometimes. All right, got a little bit of a light there, but that's okay. Um, next, I do want a little bit of a deeper color right by the sun here, because there is a deeper color just underneath. And I just wanna make sure that that goes at an angle like this. So it doesn't leak into the sun, but it stays there. Let's see if I can get a bit more of a color there. More orange. Yeah, there we go. I like this. This is fun. Okay. All right. Okay, now um, to run along, because it's 7.24, I do want to give everybody a chance to ask some questions and such. Um, let's get into the nice, mineral violet and really play with that color combined with a little bit of, I'm gonna use a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. Most people have some amount of ultramarine blue in their, in their boxes. Now, it doesn't matter if I go over the trees because the trees are dark and we'll bring it back in. So it's no problem. I'm just gonna take the color and go willy nilly with a little bit of the ultramarine. Yeah, so now we're going to just leak in some purples. 
And I know we see this huge amount of orange here. So we're going to just put that in here. Just put some bright. Red orange right there. Just shaping it, enjoying it. All right. Next, going back in with some purple and letting that leak in. Um, there's this lovely striation almost because it's a city and has like lines, little things that are going on. Um, I'm going over that building right now. It does not matter. Um, let's also go down here a bit because some of that city is peeking through. And then we have a little bit more here because then we can get a nice circular effect there. And it does not matter what colors I get down here, except maybe in the the brush, I guess, or like this little um, lighter value um, dry shrubbery, uh, which we can pull back with some lifting. And what is lifting? I'll show you some um, in a minute. We're just gonna go over. I'm going to take some deeper values, like a, a dark blue, any kind of dark blue will do it, and just sort of peek that in there. Guys, how's it going for you? Okay. Uh, us? Great. <laughs> Painting it's furiously. Great. <laughs> huh? Painting furiously. Painting furiously. Okay, so for those of you who are painting like me, and um, and maybe you happen to do a little splash like I just did, which is so sad. But when that happens, and it does happen sometimes, you take a paper towel, keep it on hand on your left hand, and take a very clean brush, and you very carefully go in with whichever color you think is closest to that orange area, and you slowly pick up whatever happened there. So I had a little dot. I don't know if anybody noticed that, but if you did, um, you'd see that there was a, a slight dot of purple that popped into my sky. Now, it's all right. It happens, but it's gone now. Okay. I'm feeling pretty happy with this crazy amount of color I have. <laughs> I hope you all are enjoying uh, how insane this coloring is. Um, keeping the sun white, don't don't worry too much about it, okay? if you If yours has bled in or is not doing a perfect job, it's all right. We can go back in with a little bit of white paint later, okay? Um, the hope is that you just have a bit of a glow around the sun. That's more important than anything else. All right, let's see. Um, oh, let's put some pale washes at the bottom. I feel like it should be, I have this strange color, which I've been wanting to use. It's all, it's like a, almost like an ochre, but it's a very dull ochre. And I feel like that mixed with some of that purple is going to give me a lovely light value, but shadowy color. So like this. Does that make sense? Um, so let's see. Let's see if I can show you guys. There we go. This lovely, like a muddy lavender. And if we go in with a bit more, because I definitely need a bit more. All right, as you can see, everything is still quite damp because when you make the paper damp, it does stay damp for a while. Um, this is the lovely Archer's paper like I wrote in my email, or rather uh, Melissa, Melissa sent it out to everybody. Um, here. This paper will stay down for a while. You'll have a nice experience with it if you're using it. Uh, but it also uh, has this lovely quality where you can do this. Let me show you what you can do. So I'm going to take uh, um, a quill, which looks like this, a quill brush. And I'm going to just quickly lift. When I'm lifting something, it means I'm pushing my brush down and letting it sit there for a second so that this clean, damp brush can act like a straw. And it just leaves these lovely, you know, sort of light value. Paint. It may not be pure white, but it just lifts some of that paint off and gives you this opportunity to go back in and maybe put down a different color. 
But why do you do it like this instead of just painting around it? Because one, it's more fun. <laughs> Two, you get an opportunity to, you see all these color blending to produce that with a clear demarcated brush lines. Yeah, it, it, very difficult. So better to enjoy it like this. Now, for example, if I wanted to go back in with some of that, um, I'm mixing it a little bit of yellow with in that ochre color that I had. I can go back in and add this, you know, sort of here, yeah, let me show you. Tiny bits of yellow, just to sort of pop the color down here. And let's see if I can. Um, Rima and uh, Claudia, is this, is, are the colors visible? Do they feel like you can, I know it's kind of shining because it's wet, but do you see? Um... Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. they're visible. Okay. They're visible. So I'm just, yeah. I'm just going to try and lift a few more things here. And for which I just want to do this. I just want to press my brush down like a straw uh, and, and let it behave like a straw. But if you don't press it down hard enough uh, or keep it there long enough, it will not suck up um, the paint like mine is. Okay. So just be aware that you want to really suck some of that up. Okay. Let's get into some darker colors. The last value of dark colors we'll be doing is uh, the building and that darkest scope of trees in the in the foreground. But first we're going to go in and create some interesting city lines. Um, let's also get some lavender. So now this is definitely nice and damp, okay? But I also want some support here for a second. Okay. Please give me a second while I pick something up. <clears throat> Okay, I'm just gonna do this for a minute. Is it still visible? Not as much. Uh, put it down, yeah, put it down. Mm -hmm. Better? Okay. Yeah, that's visible. All right, okay. Now having done this, I wanna put in a bit of an ultramarine blue and purple line right at the horizon. Um, just a pale, I wanna go in with a pale blue. I thought, I think I said pink, but I actually prefer this. So I'm gonna do this and you'll see what I mean. It is going to bleed a little bit, but it'll bleed downwards. It's going to be quite pretty. There we go. And because this painting is, it's quite a forgiving painting. I mean, except for the fact that even the sky, if you messed up the sky, don't think about it. Just, just kind of put down whatever colors. The sky can be so many colors sometimes at sunset that the sky is like no problem. So um, let's get some definition there when it's a little drier, but for right now, you can see where the horizon is. You can start to get a sense of the colors I'm going for. I'm mixing in with some um, mineral violet and some scar um, pyrrole scarlet. And I'm just gonna go in and sort of create some striations here, like as though there's like these, the, the city has you know stuff happening back there. You can mix in whichever colors feel good. You can use even just like a pink, uh, a purple blue, even like like I am right now. And I like the idea of getting a little deeper in value as I as it gets a little closer to me. Um, the the paler value is going all the way back, so that you can have some atmospheric uh, perspective. Um, let's see, another little purpley red here would be nice. Something there. Um, I also want a little bit of a scarlet red, uh, like a really deep, um, the pyrrole scarlet mixed with some of that violet. And I'm just gonna go in right over here where those trees were sticking out and just let this bleed downwards like this because that's a pretty strong red. It comes in exactly where that sun is picking up on the, the sun um, reflect the whole big cast light is happening. I wonder if anybody in the chat caught on and wants to give me the term for what this halo beautiful halo. Yeah, I guess it is a halo, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. I think you're right. And you just call it a halo. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Um, let's see now. Let me get some blue going. And I want to leak in some blue. It would be nice to have some little bits of blue in there. Little darker values. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, some of these uh, city, whatever things they are that are happening, um, are also going into the into this area where the sun is um, got the halo effect. Um, I think you should just put down some dots, you know, just something to say like it's not perfect. It's not going to be this perfect just light. It's it's going to have things in there because it's over a big city. Um, I want to go in and get some real deep values now going. Um, and what honey consistency means, which is the term I've been using and telling you guys, so I hope you all are understanding this. I mixed up some of that lovely transparent um, uh, Pirol orange, and I've mixed it up with my violet, and I have this color, which is a lovely color. Now, honey consistency just means that I'm using more pigment and less water. That's what it means. So I'm just doing a little bit of a, while everything is still nice and wet, I get these soft edges and I can put dots and things like as though there's things out there in the distance. Uh, we don't quite know what it is, but it's out there. I can take another brush and bring in some blues. Um, and blues and purples maybe, let's see, first the blues. I just want some blue, some blue light like back there leaked in it's so fun so just play with this like if you feel like putting in some other colors go for it this is a great um opportunity to just play with color and see what what sticks what do you want you know which ones feel more you um i know there's a photo reference and we're working from it but it's also fun to just play and see how it all uh comes together on the pages i don't think of it as a one right way of doing this Okay, I have with me now some, some of that same lovely violet, some of that orange, and I'm gonna take in some deep, deep, okay, this is my dark value. This is some, some deep colors that I have on my palette. Any dark colors, you can even go in for a bit of black if that's what you prefer, yeah? Uh, but I'm keeping this painting at an angle slightly, uh, because mine is quite wet, and you just do these little lovely strokes. And as you come down, you'll notice that your paper is not as wet anymore, and you can start to shape the bottom of that copse of trees so that it's not quite as like just you know like a straight line. You want you want it to have some um, you know like a negative shape towards where we had the lighter values. And that always makes things look so much more interesting, murky, like there, it's, something is hidden in there. It's always a nice feeling to have those double, um, those layers, like you know, one behind the other. So you've got some negative painting going on there. I hope that's visible to everybody. Um, I'm also going to go in now at this stage. I'm using a little bit of a blue-black that I have here. And I'm going to just bring in that building. something like that and just kind of bring that down yeah um, I'm not getting a sharp edge and that's just because the paper is that wet um, I'll try with some honey consistency honey consistency paint just means again like I said really thick pigment almost like straight from the tube even and it sort of creates this lovely um, intense coloration but also does not move as much as um, paint that has uh, water in it that's what it is all right, some dark dots and dashes here. Think of it as like a Morse code handwriting. You're filling in the background in the, you know, in the distance. You, you've got something or the other there. So you just want to play around with that, add some little dark values like there's buildings, there's things back there. And you don't want it to look empty. You want it to look like there's stuff and you've, you've noticed these things there. So you're putting dots and dashes and things in. Yeah. All right. Um, some more of that dark value. I'm going to go in with my violet, my pearl orange, and some viridian green. And that gives me a really rich, rich... Um, in fact, I can put a little bit up here, sort of almost like a 
I think some of that was like that. It had an edge, a sharp edge, you know. So, all right, here we come down, we leave some of this because we notice that um, a bit of the city is peeking through here. So we just do that. Um, I also sometimes use my brush this way. So here, now you can see it flat again. Um, and I use my brush this way, if everybody can see that, like reverse, because then I can see the points and the, the negative shape I'm making. And I do this. Um, how's it going, guys? You, you guys okay? How's it, like, enjoying the painting? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Arima, Claudia? Yeah, yeah. that's good. Okay. All right, let's see if I can get this done in time. Um, let's see, it's 7.41. Um, if people have questions in the chat, this is a good time to start asking or um, just if there's anything you, or maybe um, in about, like I was hoping I can actually finish the painting by um, 7.50 so we can have a bit of show and tell and enjoy um, either looking at the paintings, if anybody wants to share their work, talk about it, it'd be great to do that. Um, I'm also going to just create some bushes here, some things that are extra shapes that make things interesting. Um, if you bleed it in with some of the orange, that's also a pretty way to create some extra layers of color, bushes, things that are living out here in the shadows, because that sun is so bold and bright. Now, if you notice, besides that light color scrub scrubby whatever dry brushes we have some of the grass that's also flattened almost and that's more like a brown so i i am going to just put in a blue brown I'm gonna mix up some blue brown and that looks something like this so it has a nice blue shadowy cast to it but it also frames some of that shrubbery so we don't have to you know have it all be just uh, one flat area. You can just sort of play with this some more and enjoy. Um, maybe even connect some of these shapes so that it's not a continuous. Yeah, there we go. And then some of this can be shaped this way. And to make that road, um, I'm thinking just, I'm going to take some straight up uh, neutral tint or black, whatever you'd like, whatever you have is fine but I want a blue cast on that road. So that's kind of important to me. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have that color down. Uh, I may not use it, uh, I may not clarify exactly that it's a road just yet, uh, but I will at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay, getting some more blue in there. Let's see, a few more little dark um, strokes. Uh, the shape of the brush strokes really defines uh, what's happening, like, what is it? Is it is it shrubbery? Is it, what is it, right? So for those of you who want to experiment with this, you could, I don't want to do too much, but I want to just show you. If you take something like this, like a fan brush, and just sort of go in a bit, you can play around and create some, you know, scrubby, see that? Sort of pull some of that paint in and yeah, there we go. Just a little bit of, you know, finer brush strokes that you normally would not get with a, a thick brush. So is that visible, uh, Rima, Claudia? The um, the little um, fan brush effect? Yes. It's a little yes, yeah, it is. visible, but it's a little... Yeah, it's, it's too... Yeah, it's probably not as strong a image. Um, uh, sorry, as, as strong a... It's not easily visible. I'll I'll try and see if I can quickly take a picture and send this in the chat so people actually have an idea of what it's looking like. Let me see if I can do that. Power of technology. All right, let me see if I went over this and I actually can't. All right, people, bear with me for one second, taking this off screen so I can take a nice picture. It looks a little, uh, I think the word is lurid. <laughs> Because it's so wet. Um, so forgive the crazy coloring, but it is fun. I, I love the crazy coloring. Sorry, we, uh, Claudia, you were about to say something. Tell me. No. Oh, oh okay. okay. There we go. I think that's enough information. Okay, done. 
Um, I'm also going to do a fancy airdrop to my laptop, which is very high tech for me. Okay, so now all I have to do is go to the chat and actually see. Oh, thank you, Liz. And uh, ooh, Rima has written stuff here. Oh, that's great. Oh, thank you, Rima. That's awesome. Um, brushes. Yes, yes. So, all right. Let me get an image out there to everybody and for the photo to work. Oh, okay. Let's see if I can do this again. Take this, do this. Let's see. Right. Yeah. Rima, if I send you this picture, do you think you could put it into the um, chat? Sure, I can try. Thank you. I just sent it to you in our chat. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Only because I, I don't know if I can do that while I'm, yeah, for some reason I can't find it now. Okay, I sent it to you a couple of ways, so hopefully it'll, okay. Um, all right, guys, now this is the exciting bit. This is what, 747. I have three minutes to call this done. <laughs> okay, I wanna do a few things. I want a very bright red at the horizon. I thought about it and I'm like, nope, going in. So here we go, a uh, pretty straight line. Sometimes I stand up for this kind of a thing so I can be sure that my, I always line up my paper to the edge of my um, board or whatever. So I'm not wonky in my, um, in my parallel lines. I try and I'm just gonna sort of do some kind of a little dotted dashy thing here. Okay. And I also feel like there's one more line here. So, yeah, that's sort of important to me. I feel like that was in, like a nice thing to have. I can even wet that slightly, just sort of do that a bit. Um, if I feel like there's a bit of a orange cast needed anywhere, I can go in, bring in some orange there. All right, there we go, I like that. That makes me happy. So guys, sometimes you just need to take a leap and say, I'm going to add some color and it's all right. It's no big deal because if you feel like it's not punchy enough, like I'm feeling like this has got to be punchier, that's fine. Just go ahead and do that. All right. Um, sky could have gone even darker uh, and I can still do that, but maybe I won't attempt it just now because we're coming to the end. Um, let's see, what else do I want? I want a tiny bit of purpley values here, especially when, while it's drying now. And over there, the Mesa, as uh, Claudia told me it's called. I'm gonna just make sure that it's, you know, just somewhere out there, there's some Mesas out there. And I'm gonna put in a few more dots here because I don't think it's as interesting a city unless it has, you know, a few dots and dashes, and we don't know what all is going on in there, right? Okay, last thing I wanted to also say is that when I, uh, before I put the white paint, which I will be doing in a second, um, I'm gonna take some more dark paint on my brush and just create a little more of a, a defined, now that the, the paper is a bit drier, I can do a few defined lines. And um, sharper edges uh, to the silhouette of these trees. Um, it feels like it's an important um, thing to do because it really gives this whole painting the uh, this lovely deep twilight effect. So it's important. So let's see if I can pull this off. All right. Seems like we are. It's a dark enough value. All right, guys. I'm gonna use this lovely gouache white, okay? It's this. 
It's a lovely white, um, simple, nice, strong. And we're gonna draw a couple of things with this. So first of all, I need my pointiest brush. Um, you could use a, 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 a liner or a, um, what's the other one called? Anyways, it's a very thin liner brush. And I have this brush right now, which is gonna help me create few stripes by the edge of the road. It just creates a nice effect. Helps me kind of say, this is definitely a road. And I just put a, put a few things and obviously try and keep it in if, keep, keep the, keep the strong perspective um, understanding like going, okay, that's important. Now, if you squint at your photograph, which is something we didn't have to do much of in this painting, but we should, um, is if you squint, you can see all the brights very easily. I'm just gonna hide, you know, pretend like this is hiding behind there somewhere. And if you need to soften something, an official technique is to touch the painting with your finger and smudge the mark you just made. Um, let me get rid of that. All right, there we go. All right, let's get a couple of white dots here as well. Let's not ignore the left-hand side. I'm just gonna put a couple of dots as though there's something going on back there. One down there. Maybe even a slightly peel something in there. This one is probably more dull because it's in the brightest part of the painting. So I'm not gonna make it too crazy bright. Okay, the other thing you can do is mix up a little bit of that white with some orange or something slightly duller and just sort of pick up some of these values. You need some pale values in there, but mixed with some of that white so that it's not going to just disappear, it'll stay. And I hope you can see that in there. Is that visible, Rima, Claudia? Mm -hmm. uh, are some of these like yes, lighter values that yeah. I'm putting in? Yeah? Okay. So that's what I just want to make sure that happens. Um, I also noticed that this building is not getting too much of a sharp edge. So I want to just pick up some of that paint, make sure that that building really does look sharp, then go back in. Now that I've dried that area out a bit with my brush, go in, sharpen that edge. There we go. And just pretend that there's a building back there, some other stuff down here. Maybe soften that a bit. All right, the other one thing you could do is if you have a scraping tool, you can very quickly scrape out some of these um, lovely long tree trunks that are there. Um, just something to add an interest to the foreground, draw your eye in a bit. Um, you can only do this when the paint is really wet, but um, it's I'm using an old um, pottery tool, just like a little, Thing that I keep on hand for this exact reason. Um, just something to add some interest there. Yep. All right. Um, what's the time? Ooh, 7.54. We should stop. Okay. So guys, this is the painting. I'm going to put some tape on the edges so people can not see the curled aspect, which means I'm just putting on a roll of tape at the edge of my painting. And having it sit down. Um, Bima, Claudia, do you guys want to share your work? I can spotlight you if you'd like. Go ahead, Rima. <laughs> All right. Speedy, Rima. All right, let me, let me put her oh, add my thing around. Spotlight. Oh, there we go. Uh, did that work? There it is. Whoa. Ooh, okay, I, I think you got to turn it the other way. We're all seeing it vertical right now. But that's probably because you're on the phone or... Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, unfortunately, sorry. But when you went vertical, you kind of the whole thing went vertical. That's fabulous, Rima. No, no, wait, wait. Slow down, slow down. Go back. That's really awesome. Look at that red leaking into the violets. That's so good. Um, That's great. Okay, pause there, Rima, for one second. Bonnie is asking me why so much white. Um, Great point. Uh, so, Bonnie, I only put in, I, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, let me see if I can. Okay, I should get my painting further down. This went out out of the camera. Oh, da, da. All right, is that better, guys? Can you guys see? 
Um, I'll send you another picture of this in the chat, guys. But that white really does uh, pull up a nice amount of detail, little dots of highlight in the in the distant city, that kind of thing. Okay, uh, Reva, that was awesome. Did you you happy? Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, someone yeah. said that they made a big dot, a um, big mark on their painting, and they decided they didn't want to. What can you do? Okay, big mark depending on where. So if you've done it in the sky, make it a cloud. <laughs> if yeah. you've got it in your um, city landscape area, make it something. Maybe the tree sticks out a bit more. Maybe your your uh, foreground is now further closer to you and you have a bigger tree. You know, play around with it. It's yours to make your own. Oh, hello there, Zadiv. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Claudia, you want to show yours next? Not really, mm. but... <laughs> okay, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> But your work is always so good. Okay, hang on. Oh, there you go. Are you kidding? Uh, oh, the, that's the so colors good. Kind of came out deader than I thought, and I and I overdid the um. I didn't get the glow I wanted because I overdid it. But but you know, parts of it I like. Awesome. Um, can I point something out because this is actually a yep. great point that you've made some lovely negative shapes here, like in the you know where the foreground shrubbery mm -hmm. is, and you've got some really nice marks. It's such a great. Um, op you've given yourself a great opportunity to, you know, shape those things. So you could re-wet something and work with it too. So mm -hmm. that's another, yeah. Um, okay. I hope that helped Peter. Oh, great. Hi. And hi, Madhumita. Thanks, Claudia, for showing. Um, Masa as in table. Yes, Madhumita. Thank you. That's it. Um, you can take a screenshot by doing shift command uh, and it shows up. Oh, can somebody do that? Uh, Rima, do you think you can so should we do a screenshot? Is that what they? I think that's what they're suggesting. I think what we, they're we saying, this. what they're saying, is for themselves. So anybody can oh. do a screenshot. So if they want to see the, if they could screenshot your um, photo. smart. <laughs> Got you. Yeah, yeah. All right. I, I sent. I did send this. your like pre before the whites. You put in the whites. I did send okay. that. Um, yeah. So guys, since we have to stop this call soon, um, I will do one more little photograph, and this time I'll do it perfectly hopefully give me one second and now that it's got the whites and everything it'll look slightly different than before so let me just take that okay the colors are a bit washed out just simply because it is so wet folks i want to try one more time and see if i can get it to be um a better color value in mind yeah i think i got it Rima, can I uh, lean on you to send this again? Yes. Just before everybody so uh, closes. Email it to me the... cause... Yeah. Email oh, email it. it. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Got it. Do that right there. All right, guys, I'm emailing this image right away to uh, Rima. She will put it in the chat. You guys can save it. Um, and that way you can look at it. All right, there you go, Rima. Um, thank you all. Um, any chance anybody wants to show their work? Do they want to? Just wondering if anybody else wants to. Oh, you're so welcome, Anna. Aslahan, hello. Nice to see you. Um, that's great. Uh, thank you all. Uh, thanks for joining in, for enjoying uh, with me. Hey, Yasmin, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is always good to hear all the, the comments at the end. Um, how to show Cheryl Nash. Okay, um, is there a way for... Okay, I should remove my spotlight, basically. Is that what I do, um, Rima? How do I do it, Rima, so that I can show everybody? I don't know. I wonder. I would love to see everybody's work. Is there a way, Rima, that I could show people's work? Sorry, I was talking without with my thing on mute. Um, oh, yeah, I think if you do remove your spotlight, it should be, um, you should be able to see who else is on the thing. And if you remove all of our spotlights, okay, remove I think. pin, 
If I remove, is it? Hmm. It's not giving me any option to show everybody. So That's right so now we sad. have panelists mm -hmm. and and attendees. I I've, I've never done it this way, but my guess is that if you are able to undo making us panelists, then you'd be able to see everybody, maybe. Okay, so let me. I don't, um, okay, Yasmin says I don't think you can show others in webinar mode. Okay. Oh, she's right. This is webinar mode. She's right, Yasmin. Thank you. She resolved the mystery. I'm so sorry. And Deborah, that was uh, true. I also wanted to see everybody. Maybe we'll. I'll talk to the Arts Council and see if there's a way for us to do this. So, um, you know, so we can all. All right, we have two attendees who raise their hands, Joyce and Cheryl. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, you know, can I allow everybody to talk? Maybe that at least I can do. There we go. I've unmuted a couple of them. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. Hi. Oh, I was just raising my hand to show, but if you can't show, that's fine. I know. I want to see. Are you? Uh, do you have your camera on? Um, I you can't turn it on. Let's see. Where is it? <laughs> oh, someone's saying if you think if you stop recording, it might work. Oh, all right. Uh, do I have any control? I, mean, I don't know if I have any control. <laughs> I Joyce, thought I, uh, do you have a video button, Joyce? I'm looking for it, but I don't see it. Oh, oh so I'm yeah, sorry, maybe you, maybe it's not set up, so you can. Um, yeah. No, usually, usually I can, but I don't know. Well, okay. I think yeah. maybe. Maybe because Rima and I are co-hosts. Uh, no, even after I stop. Okay, I'm stopping the recording, guys. Okay. I'm gonna take a yeah. I'm gonna take a beat here and stop recording. Okay. Uh, stop cloud. Rec 